Good afternoon. How are you guys today? Today we're going to be doing a screencast talking about an introduction to genetics, probability, and pun and square. This is something that we usually do a little bit earlier in the year, but you all gave me some feedback that because you had just done the genetics unit in your biology class, if you were taking biology, that you wanted to wait a little bit. So now that we've cleared off digestion and nutrition, we're going to go back and spend this week doing a little bit of genetics. So today we're doing some notes and we'll get right to it. So if you have your note sheet, you should get it out so that you can take some notes while we're going along here. So the father of genetics is Gregor Mendel. I'm sure you've heard about him before in biology class. And we just have to bring him up so that uh, we can remember all of the reasons uh, why he did what he did and what he was doing and how that affects our knowledge of genetics today. So he was an Austrian monk and that's kind of an interesting profession that he was uh, in a religious affiliation but he also was very interested in science and he did a lot of research at the monastery that he was at. He researched pea plants and he was studying um, the different patterns that were in the different generations of pea plants. This was a good plant for him to utilize because he could get several generations per year and be able to study the traits. And he was looking at different traits. He was observing traits and he was able to make some conclusions from his studies that applied to other plants and animals. And this helped to develop the laws of inheritance um, and principles of inheritance that we still use today. So he identified genetics as the study of inheritance. And inheritance is kind of a larger word. It is the transmission of traits from parent to offspring. Some of the conclusions that Mendel made, he made three major conclusions that are called the principles of inheritance. And the first conclusion he made was that inheritance of traits is determined by units passed on to each offspring. These units are called genes, and a gene is a unit of inheritance passed from a parent to offspring. An offspring inherits one unit from each parent. At the time, Mendel didn't have a name for these units, and later we established that they were called genes. So an allele is a form of a gene that expresses a certain trait. That's what we obtain from each parent for each offspring. And those are unique. They can be the same, they can be different. The third principle of inheritance that Mendel was able to establish was that a trait may not be seen in an individual, but it can still be passed on to an offspring. Some other terms that we need to be able to identify. Homozygous. Homozygous is when an animal is considered to be homozygous for a trait if it has two of the same alleles for a particular trait. They are the same. If an animal is heterozygous, the animal is heterozygous for a trait if it has two different alleles for that trait. So if a parent, each parent passes the same allele, then the offspring is homozygous. If those parents pass two different alleles, it is heterozygous. And animals' genes are expressed as their genotype. And the genotype is the combination of alleles that an animal possesses. For example, an animal may have a genotype uppercase B, uppercase B for coat color. How these alleles and, geno and genotype are expressed in the offspring or an animal's physical traits is called the phenotype. The phenotype is the observable or biochemical traits of an organism. Example, 
an animal with the genotype uppercase B, uppercase B, may have a brown physical coat color, which is its phenotype. Traits can either be dominant or recessive. Dominant traits always show themselves when found in an animal, and they hide the presence of a more recessive trait. A recessive trait is hidden by a dominant trait unless it is expressed in a homozygous form. There are two recessive alleles. Recessive traits are not affected by dominant traits and can still be passed on to offspring even if they are hidden by a dominant trait. A Punnett square is our next discussion, how we use this material and information. So a Punnett square is a tool used in genetics that determines the probability of an offspring having a certain trait passed on by the parents. Probability, bring some math in here, is the chance that something will happen, and it is expressed as a percent or a fraction. When using a Punnett square, the parent's genotype or the genes for a specific trait are expressed with letters. Each letter represents an allele or a form of a gene for a specific trait. Dominant genes are often expressed with uppercase letters, for example, an uppercase H. Recessive genes are often expressed with lowercase letters. An example would be lowercase H. And as a reminder, homozygous means the Animal has two alleles of the same type. Heterozygous means they have two different alleles for the trait. A hybrid is the offspring of a parent with different genotypes. And our last definition here is monohybrid cross. It's a cross between hybrid parents that differ in a single trait. So we're going to complete a Punnett square between two parents that shows a monohybrid cross for a single trait. And in this example, one parent's genotype goes on the side of the box and the other goes on the top. And we always use a four square box. We draw that on our paper. In this example, we're gonna use the allele H for hair length. Uppercase H is for long hair and lowercase H is for short hair. In this example, one parent is homozygous dominant for long hair and one parent is heterozygous and has long hair. So we put the homozygous dominant parent on the side and we have one H from its genotype in the top box or next to the top box on the left and the second H from that parent's genotype in the second box on the left beside it. And the other parent goes along the top, the heterozygous parent, and the first letter, uppercase H, goes above the first box, and the lowercase H goes above the second box. When you're doing a Punnett square, you just copy the letters on the side of the boxes into the boxes to the right of each of those letters, and copy the letters above the top boxes into the boxes below them. And you can see you have to copy the letter into each box that it is beside for the ones, the alleles on the left hand side. And you have to copy the letters above the boxes into each box below it because each of the potential probability of the outcome must have two letters, one that came from each parent. You should also remember to keep the uppercase letters first whenever you're writing a trait because that establishes that the dominant letter, the dominant trait is going to express itself. The genotypes in the boxes are the possible genotypes of the offspring with this combination of genotypes in the parents. The Punnett square tells the frequency of each genotype will likely occur in the offspring. It's not saying that there's four offspring that are going to take place. So in this example, the genotype uppercase H, uppercase H will occur 50% of the time and the genotype uppercase H, lowercase H will occur 50% of the time. The genotypic ratio is the probability of each type of genotype occurring. In this example, the genotypic ratio is two uppercase H, uppercase H, to two uppercase H, lowercase h. The phenotypic ratio is the probability of each type of phenotype occurring. In this example, the phenotypic ratio is 
four long-haired animals and uh, two homozygous dominant for long hair, two homozygous, he- excuse me, two heterozygous for long hair. So four long-haired animals is what you would express for the phenotype. A dye hybrid cross utilizes a Punnett square to determine the probability of two different traits occurring in an offspring. Hair cr- trait, for example, uppercase B would be for straight hair and lowercase B for crimped hair. So in our example, we're still going to use the long hair, short hair, and we're going to use the uh, hair crimp trait as well. We're going to add that in. So one parent is heterozygous for the trait for long hair and homozygous recessive for the trait for hair crimp. The other parent is homozygous dominant for the trait for long hair and heterozygous for the trait for hair crimp. Each parent can give any combination of one allele from each trait that is being tested. The combinations can be found using a method similar to the FOIL method of distribution found in math. And FOIL stands for first, outside, inside, last. So what you would do is line up the traits and pull out the letters from each trait that follow in that sequence. And you can see for parent one, I've given that example here. So parent one, and I apologize that the formatting on this came a little bit off. The first is uppercase H, lowercase b. The outside is uppercase H, lowercase b. The inside is lowercase h, lowercase b. And the last is lowercase h, lowercase b. So here's an example of a dihybrid cross. And again, unfortunately, I apologize. This has already filled it in for you. You don't get a chance to do it, but you certainly could do it on your own. And the first parent that we just did the FOIL method for is listed across the top. Each of the possible combinations of each of the two genes that are, we are looking for are in one, above one box across the top of this. And notice this is a 16 square box. We have to do that to be able to find the outcome of two traits. And then along the side is parent two's potential genotypes that it can pass on. We do the same thing. We put the um, traits from the parent along the side, transfer them over to the boxes beside it, and from the parent above the top, we pull those letters down into the boxes below it. We always keep like letters together, so the H's and the B's, and the uppercase letters always go first. So in this result, the genotypic ratio is a little bit harder. We just have to find each of the options of the two trait possibilities. So in this case, there's four uh, homozygous dominant H four and heterozygous B, four homozygous dominant H, homozygous recessive B, four heterozygous H, heterozygous B, and four heterozygous H, homozygous dominant or excuse me, homozygous recessive B. And then the phenotypic ratio, if we map that out back to the phenotypes we're using, there's eight or half potential long straight haired offspring and half are potentially going to have long crimped hair. No short hair possibilities. There are numerous instances in genetics when Mendel's laws do not apply, and there are other rules that govern the inheritance of traits, including incomplete dominance, codominance, and sex-linked traits. Incomplete dominance is a blending. Blending occurs in heterozygous individuals that have this type of trait. For example, red bulls bred to white cows may produce a brown offspring with white spots in the coat. In codominance, some traits to alleles can be codominant, causing them both to show up in the phenotype of an offspring that is heterozygous. An example would be a solid bay horse mated with a white horse will produce a bay roan horse, and roan is a mixture of solid bay hair and white hair in the coat. 
And finally, sex-linked traits are traits that are determined by the sex chromosomes. They may be expressed differently in males and females. In cats, one coat color gene is on the X chromosome. A male cat with this trait receives one X chromosome and will be either black or orange. Female cat, its heterozygous, will be cat.